Good afternoon to all of you, or good morning, or good evening, depending upon where you are. I made the comment earlier today that with COVID, you never know where this, where today will find you. Well, I'm in the corridor of Fadil Berisha studio, which is probably not strange because I've spent half my life, I think, in the corridor where we've worked on projects with Fadil to help artists. With us today are three of the brightest stars, not only as, as Albanians, but also in the world. And we have gotten together to talk amongst friends, to talk about art and diplomacy. What does it mean? Why do, they, why do they do it? So we'll start with that conversation and then find many other things that we can talk about. So to the three of you, thank you very much for being with us today. You are an inspiration to a, a lot of Albanians and gave a lot of Albanians an opportunity to see that the world really is for those who work really hard and there are a lot of talented Albanians doing remarkable things. So with that as a background, please, why is diplomacy so important to you and what does it mean to you personally? And why do you do it? So I'll talk to Amina first, right? How are you? I'm good. So, How are you? You. Uh, My you know, very, very long time ago, you know, I realized that the power of the first visual, of what a person looks like, which is sounds superficial, but it was really important, I think, uh, from this country and all around the world. So I always would see the Albanians and see them, you know, why can't they look a certain way? But how can, how can I help them? They can look a little bit better as far as, you know, uh, in, in those times, especially in Kosovo and, and during the communist time. And so the time finally came, you know, where I said, you know, one day I think I'm going to make them all beautiful. The whole world's going to love them, which because I want them to be loved by the world. And if the first visual is really important. So it started, it started with, you know, right before the war, you know, in Kosovo, we um, did a fundraiser uh, to shed some light in the war in Kosovo. And we got the most amazing actress, Vanessa Redgrave, to help us to do the first fundraiser at St. John the Mine, this amazing church in New York City. And I never forget what she said to me. She said, you know, Fadil, we're inviting this famous artist to do this concert to shed light in the war that's going on in Kosovo. And everyone is saying, what do Albanians look like? Are they Arabs, like dark? And she goes, it's nothing wrong being an Arab, though, human beings, but you're not Arabs, you're Europeans. So you as a photographer, Really, what you should do is take a picture of two young children, two teenagers, two middle-aged, and two elderly. Give them to me, and I'll know what to do with that. The opening of the concert, she would hold the picture one at a time without words. So she's holding one picture at a time, and the last picture she goes, these are the Kosovo Albanians. And everyone in the audience went, oh my God, that was like my daughter, my son, my mother, my grandmother. So they related immediately to them, and they became one. And I never forgot the power of that. And from that day on, I tried to, whether from politicians, from fashion model like you, like you, to try to find any talent that was around the world that was Albanian that had a status and to become an example for the others. And certainly you were one of the top first models that I, you know, that we met. And you had one on your own as a supermodel of the world. And we got to meet in New York. I never forget that when we met and I, had no idea that you were Albanian. And we started talking. I said, okay, you've got to do this. You have to go as Miss Albania. You have to go, I'll do whatever. She goes, I'll do it. And long story short, we got married. We can't use her. But still, she becomes the role model around the world where we take our trip to Albania and inspire all the Albanian artists. And it was the most beautiful time we had there where we shared all this with them. And it was a group of artists we took. Remember, we took... Uh, all the designers from Kosovo, Albania, U.S. And from that day, I, I, I've always brought artists from New York, all the best artists, um, to educate and to teach the artists in Kosovo and Albania. And it was the most amazing thing to see the power of the visual and to where you see it today, where we actually, we, I photographed from the presidents to models to everyone, which I would never as an artist do. But it was important that I, see this visual of a well put together. As our Lagasha always said, we shine the gold. I could not give them talent. I could just give them my part to keep shining the gold and bring the outside. And to me, it was always very important. But you can jump in, of course, you and then Moneda, which, you know, we can talk about how important. If there's anyone in this world that has shined a lot of gold and you've polished it and you continue to polish. So I, I really, truly 
Um, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here alongside you. As you know, you're one of my dearest friends and a mentor since the minute I met you many, many years ago. Um, and I, I remember when I first met you and how excited you were that I was Albanian <laughs> and how um, it was an instant connection. And I just remembered the first couple of months coming to your studio and just seen so many different faces coming through your office, coming through your studio, you taking photographs of them and never charging them a dime and never, you know, just thriving, pushing them and pushing them and promoting them. And something inside of me, it was almost like a light bulb, you know, and, and you truly are the person why this light bulb shined inside of me because starting with our first trip to Albania, I, I really, it, 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 it almost like turned a volcano inside of me. And, and, and I realized what of an important role I had, um, what an incredible duty I had toward my community, towards my heritage and towards my, um, towards myself, um, my family, where I come from, that for the rest of my being, it was going to be my mission to share with the world how incredible, how beautiful, how smart, how intellectual our art world is, our culture is. Um, and I feel like through us, through powers like me and you and, and millions of other Albanians, we bring so much light and joy and beauty into our community and we share it with the world. So um, and obviously we have one of the greatest vocalists sitting next to you. So I, I just last night took an opportunity to kind of do a little bit of digging and, and it, it's just, it, it gives me so much love and joy to see so many incredible Albanian talents of every kind, whether they're artists or singers or photographers or models or you know, it's just, it makes it that much brighter. And so- But you, but you know what was most important is your mother's face and your father when you came back. Yeah. I saw your mother and she, just like my mother, I could do 10 covers of Vogue, they can care less. But this one, I'll be honest, oh, it's so wonderful, you know? So your mother, when she, I saw her, I'm like, what are you talking about? That was the best thing that ever happened. I mean, I went back, I'm like, it meant so much to her. And your mother was such an amazing human being. She passed, but I'm so happy that she got to see you on that last fashion show that we were together. She yeah, kept, oh my God, I'll never moving. forget that. I'll never forget that. Okay, she, she's upstairs. I find a way to make Albanians just blossom everywhere around the world. Even even my mom, um, a little bit before she passed, I'll never forget. She had never seen me in a fashion show. And I have walked, God knows, miles and miles of runways. But you said to me, do you want to bring your mom? And I and I, it never occurred to me that I should bring my mom. You know, I've had my mom in photo shoots and I've taken pictures with her and I've done things. But and I'll never forget how excited she was and how proud she was. But I'll tell you something. The proudest moment she always felt is when I was on that first Iliria cover. I'll never forget that. <laughs> that made her the proudest. And, you know. Again, goes back, Fadil, to you really, truly opening doors for so many of us because you help us stay connected to our communities. You know, it's because of you when I first stepped. You know, I was a, I was a kid when I first went to Albania. Um, I remember it was in the 90s, right after um, communism sort of broke out. And, you know, the borders were some semi-open. And I remember my dad took me for the first time. And it was really, really painful um, to see to see the conditions of the country. And I always had this really hard memory with me. And so when you took me for the first time, and I'll never forget when we did the trip to Kruja and when we went to Liceni Kumonit and when we went into Kosovo, and you, when you took me to Djako for the first time and when I went to Trenic, I'll never forget this. The, I, I feel like that trip to me gave me so much pride. You know, I was... It was like my, my soul was coming out of my body and I just felt right at home. You know, Remember it's the, the gorgeous picture we did with all the Albanian customs all the way around. And yes, you're right as a, bride, as a bride of Albania, Kosovo. It was an amazing. Um, and Moneta, let's talk about, because yeah. really she's as. For me, at the age of 19, 
If we I are, at the age of 19, she moved to Rome. To I met many years ago, and we worked with her for years before I got to meet her. I understand that, but I just want the audience to really know to really know just who, who she is because it's you know it's a more refined area, and, and there may not be as many, many people. So, just to let you know, over the last year, Emanuela has been stay, has been performing in London, Paris, New York, Munich, Berlin, Madrid, and everywhere in the, in the world. The Economist described her as a fiery angel, the world's most acclaimed soprano. Financial Times, she throws the heart and soul into her singing. Don't even try and resist. The, the Independent as the best Madam Butterfly London has seen in years. And Australia's Daily Telegraph describing her as an unstoppable, an unstoppable phenomenon. So I think it's important that the people understand the depth of her talent. So... Um, Fadil and, and Amina were talking about how staying involved in the Albanian culture was so important to them and how they connected. And Manila, why is it so important to you? Why do you stay connected to promoting Albanians and it's a part of your life? Well, uh, the art is very important because always um, the artists, we talk with the language of our souls. So in somehow everyone, we are bringing the soul of our country, the soul of, of our roots. And I started uh, to study opera, and uh, but the, the importance of bringing out all what I, what I learned in Albania, even what my blood was, you know, uh, what Albania um, taught to me, that kind of passion that uh, the Balkan, the Balkan women they have, you know, and uh, unconsciously somehow I brought it in my singing. And that was my my strongest card in every part of the world, especially when I started in the beginning. As Fadil said before, uh, I started singing when I was 18 years old out of Albania. And everyone was telling me, oh, really, the Albanians, they know to sing opera. Mm -hmm. How possible you are not, uh, you are not like Arabs, you know? And, uh, and step by step, I was talking to them about Albania, about how we, we love art and how I start studying. And uh, in somehow I brought in my singing that that that, uh, that passion that um, uh, all the colors of the soul, Albanian soul, you know, the drama, the, the tragedy, which is somehow I I channeled through my singing, and I realized that step by step, and in that way because the opera is that kind of um, uh, field in music that you have you you face the public in every part of the world. So to present myself as an Albanian opera singer, it, everyone was curious to know about, about Albania, which they might never heard before. So I was so proud because in somehow every artist brings out, you know, the, the, their families, their, 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 their roots. And if Albania, Albania came out from a, a, after a difficult time and everyone was talking about, the, 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 the sad things about Albania and to know and to see the artists like Fadil, like Amina, like myself, like other artists that from that Albania, that small country where you can, uh, they can come out, you know, great artists. It's, uh, it's something very, very important to bring Albania in another, another light, you know, that uh, we are really a small country, but with a great tradition, with a great culture, and um, I felt that, and I feel that every time I go on stage in every part of the world. And um, what I learned as well, you know, being outside that we Albanian, we have to collaborate all together. Because all together, we become, you know, better human beings and better, uh, better Albanians, you know, because in that way we can give our example, not singularly, but uh, together we can be stronger, powerful, and to be an example, not only for the for the young generation, for the Albanians, but uh, for for every every person in the world. So that's the art. I think it was it's the best diplomacy because uh, we meet people from every kind, every part of the world, and, uh, and somehow yes, we bring ourselves. But behind that is our our story. Our story, the story of our. our what country. I always loved about you is you really always promoted Albanians. She told me one one time there was a concert in Philadelphia, yeah. and she got to perform there. And in yeah. the end, she bows down, she lifts her head up, and what does she see? An Albanian flag in the oh, audience. Yeah. And 
you started crying. I started crying because it's so emotional. So emotional, and you feel really, really, it's something. And every of the public, they were really a little because surprised how's possible. But you feel this kind of uh, emotion when you are out of your country, and uh, what we built all together outside. Now we have to bring it, you know, to be an example for every, every, for all of the, 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 for the young generation that everything is possible, even the most difficult times, even in the most difficult situation. If you want something, if you want to uh, uh, chase your dream, you can make it. And you're the perfect example for that. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. you <laughs> talked about you one time, we were, I was in uh, Germany shooting a campaign for Rolex with a, uh, very famous tenor named Jonas Kaufmann. So never lie, because you don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> so I start talking, I feel from us, I'm Albanian. He goes, oh yeah, I said, but we have some great artists in Albania. We have, you know, I go, Emile, Emile Yaho, uh, Samir Pirgu, Inva Muda. He goes, well, I know Ramonella. He goes, oh, Habra, what a great story we have about her. How she won in London. She was on the open night, it was the trip, the trip, the trip, oh, who's the? Yeah, she was the most famous opera singer, was supposed to sing, and she didn't show up in the opening night. So they threw her, Monella, understudy without any rehearsal, which means that she could lose her career or make it. Well, she made it. And as I'm telling this, goes to me, and guess who her partner was? Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I was telling the truth. So it's a small world. But True. certainly, um, you made us so proud. And I would, would like to remember something. I remember when I sang in London Tritico and I sang Sor Angelica, it was really this drama at the moment that uh, the drama is that this young sister, you know, she lost, uh, she lost, her, uh, lost her child. And, uh, and she knew that after seven years and I had to, 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 to give it kind of, um, let's say pain or that kind of pain with passion on stage. And I remember, it was really something really, even now I feel so emotional. I remember how the women, we cry when we have some, we, when we have our losses. So somehow I saw that in Albania, but never I thought I, I, could, I, I could do the same thing, you know, because the young generation, when we saw our mothers, our grandmothers, uh, so. And that moment, something came out from my heart. And I was singing that the, the loss of the, her child, of Angel, Angelica's child, came out like a Ligurim, like the, the, a woman, an Albanian woman cries. It was, it was the wailing of Albanian women, the sound exactly. of it. It was very different, but it, apparently we read the news that someone in the hospital, she put in the hospital were, from the, the whole from the of the house was crying because it was so real, and everyone was telling me at the end, the journalist, oh my God, how, uh, where you did you study the, 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 the theater? Because it was so real, and I was telling them, you know, with so Albania. much proud, because Albania, and because we have this and the, all those kind of uh, traditional, uh, uh, you know, uh, way how we express our love and the our whaling, pain. The whaling, yeah, the, and, uh, the and not only that, because to be an opera singer, yes, it's important, but uh, right now we live in this uh, kind of society, you need even to, 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 to expose your, 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 your figure, your, you know? And when I met Fadil, it was something unbelievable, because how many years ago, Fadil? It's gone 15 years. 15 years ago. Yeah. And I was so timid, because always I wanted to sing and go, go in home, you know? <laughs> really timid, because I didn't want to show myself, you know? And Fadil told me, but you are an artist. So, so when I moved to the United, when I moved to the United States and you told and people asked you, oh Avni, where's that? You said Albanian. Nobody knew what that meant. But as the years change now, oh Dua Lipa, because she's become so famous. So in your world, how have you seen the change of people's perceptions of Albanians from when you first got involved to the years that are, what, what's the perception? What, how has that changed in your life? Oh, how it changed. It changed a lot because at least, um, you know, you present the positive side, okay? And it, it gave to me a little responsibility, if I can say that, because if I told you before, it's not Hermonella anymore, okay, Hermonella, but behind, it's an Albanian artist with an Albanian story behind me. And uh, what it made it more important for me, I have to be honest with you, uh, thanks to Fadil, because in our world it's more, you know, you finish your, 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 your work and you go home and you don't have that kind of, you know, the public relation, the public, you know, uh, 
to, to be everywhere in the, the, the PR. PR, okay? And when I met Fadil, Fadil told me, okay, you are a great artist, okay, you are a great singer, but you have to show that really the great personality as well, even through the pictures, the photos, to show that, that uh, yes, it's something the else. The first face before they get to meet you. Exactly. And uh, I'm so grateful to Fadil because uh, the best photos that... Uh, we have around now in the opera world, they are Fadil's. So every, actually my, my colleagues are a little jealous now because they are telling who, who, who did this photo, you know, they want to, everyone wants to work, uh, work with. Well, uh, as we said uh, about the visual, how important. Yeah, it's For very me, important. The first yeah. picture Amina, before. Amina, what have you seen in your world, Amina? How, how, has the, how has the changed in your world from when you got involved in the beginning till now? So it's definitely drastically changed. Now I'm I'm a 36 year old woman today, and and I'm I'm a little bit wiser. I would like to think than what I was when I started at 15 and straight out of the village and right out of milking cows. So things have changed drastically, and I am a living example of that. Uh, and many many more after me, obviously. You know, I remember when I first went to Italy um, on my first trip, and I was 15 years old. And to my luck, I speak Italian, and they used to say, Sei venuta con canotto, you know, like you came with a, with a boat. And I would just laugh, and, and, and as a child, you don't know what to respond, but, you know, inside I would, like, burst and, 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 and just be so angry and, and not understand why was I being judged, you know, for something that people were doing to survive. You know, people didn't go there in boats because of joy. They went there because they were trying to seek a better life. And, and many of them lost their lives, you know, trying to, to, to escape and, and to, to get a better opportunity of life. And so through the years, um, through the years, I feel like today when I tell people I'm Albanian, they immediately, thanks to this whole entire wave of these incredible singing artists, more in the pop world, um, they associate me with, oh, so you're Albanian like Rita Ora? You're Albanian like Dua Lipa? You're Albanian like Gashi? You're Albanian like Bibi Rexa? And I'm like, yes, that's exactly what I am. And, and, and so I just feel like there's a little bit of a challenge also um, when it comes to more um, interpreting that there is a lot more to our art world and to our cultural world than just singing and, and, and singers, you know, there's, there's incredible artists. Um, there's, there's incredible, uh, cultural aspects that is just really hard. Um, just recently I encountered a professor from UCLA here in California and he asked me, where are you from? And I said, I am Albanian. And he said, you are. And, and I said, yes. And he goes, well, I do have to tell you, you have some of the most beautiful national folk dresses and i said excuse me and, and i said how do you know this and he said well we had an exhibition at ucla so for me to really truly see that um not just us not just me Ermenel and fadil and gashi and bibi rex and the names of you know there's other people that are working so hard to promote our culture every single day that for me to know that in a university like ucla there was a whole expo of cultural Albanian traditional clothes. This is incredible. You know, there's, there's, and so today I really truly feel like we are not just by, by a, by a walk, a stroll, by miles and miles ahead with, with more of exposing who we truly are culturally and, and being proud and not feeling timid or shy or, you know, in some cases embarrassed to say I'm Albanian. Uh, I remember when I started really truly my career at 19, that's the peak of when I started doing most of my stuff. And, and I remember they were asking me, where are you from? And you know, at the time it was pretty challenging to identify yourself as an Albanian because I was born in the States, but I was raised in Yugoslavia. And so I had won multiple competitions through modeling representing Yugoslavia. And so they had identified me as an Albanian, uh, as a Yugoslavian, but never really said that I was Albanian. And in one interview, um, I said, I am Albanian. I said, I'm not from 
Yugos- I'm from Yugoslavia, but I'm not Yugoslavian. And and so that kind of just when when and that was the best moment for me. Was, <laughs> there was no going back. And 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 I am so proud that 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 moment I just you know stood my ground and I said, that's it. There's why are you calling me something that I'm not? That's not who I am. Um, and so I feel like today really truly we are it's it's much easier and it's much more joyful to really start a conversation where Fadil, do you remember years ago you told me um you told you told me that there's so much dust and i will never forget how you said to me that there was so many layers of dust that has been put in our people and our culture that it takes all of us generationally to come and dust it off until we truly bring that you know that piece of gold and, and it's polished into the world. So which is here, which is here now. It's here now. Yeah, how, it, how, it, how has it changed in New York? Because you and I, our, our parents brought us here when we were very young, when people really didn't know where Albania was. So and then you've gotten involved with Albanians from every aspect throughout the world. How has it changed for you? Where did you see the changes? What affected those changes? I, look, I think we, we've done it for all of us in the beginning, which was the hardest, even for me, as a to grow up in a family, a Muslim family that did not, you know, want me to be an artist. So I had to fight through a lot to get to where, where I was. So I really tried because what I went through, I tried to make it easier for everybody else. But then I knew my mission was to really try to inspire and open doors. And I, I can I can tell you that, you know, from day one, that was my job. That's what I that's what I could do. I could I could clean up and. And, and make them look presentable, you know, and to pass that first test, and then they can prove themselves. And I can tell you um, when all this happened and I had Miss Kosova and I was determined to show the beauty of our people in front of the world and I became the photographer of 96 countries in this universe. And I didn't have my country there. I said, how could this be? So I had this dream and that to put this beauty and God put it in there and got me to do this job as a photographer. So we got uh, the first girl, Zana Krasnitsi, which was supposed to be here today, but they couldn't get here in Maricona. And I'll never forget that I had this engineer Jolie face to show the world that these are the Albanians. And sure enough, she was my vehicle where you know, we had this hard time to get her to Vietnam because Vietnam did not recognize the independence. And then luckily we had an Albanian passport for her because she had won a supermodel, Ford supermodel of Albania. And we got into the country and then it was this big drama but they didn't want them there. They didn't want the Kosovo to show up independence. Went through help, but she ended up winning like top five in, in, in the world. And then behold, Marigona comes the next year and becomes second most beautiful woman in the world. And I remember being backstage because honestly, we couldn't show any, any, any favoritism. But I see this 18 year old girl, like Orchard Hepburn. She goes on top five, three billion viewers live. And then I just looked at her and when I saw her in top five, and I just have tears in my eyes because I'm, you know, you, you were there at me at that time in Bahamas we were, as a matter of fact, which we have Miss Bahamas here today. And we were there when the whole place was screaming for good, Kosovo, Kosovo, instead of something bad. And I just, my heart just grew and I just had tears down my eyes. When she got out on the, on the second, that was, I said, my job is done, I've delivered. And then Trump was the president at that time, he goes to her, Young lady, you should have won the first place. I voted for you. As far as I'm concerned, you are the ultra happen of Kosovo. He goes, but don't worry, I'm giving you a modeling contract for the next six years, ends up in Paris. And so that to me was my moment that I said, I've achieved something that I was, in the whole world saw the Albanians as being beautiful and being like everyone else. So now seeing, of course, all these vehicles, I mean, I don't know, these were my tools. These are the people that I, I needed. To, to, to help me to show this. And certainly they all came through. Everyone, Tony Dumoulin, remember the Dancing with the Stars? He's on Dancing with the Stars and he was Albanian. And all of a sudden, I said, Tony, what did you do to us? Nobody knows you're Albanian, you're Italian. Please, he goes, Fadim, he goes and on TV and calls me up and goes, Fadim, watch the show tonight. I have a surprise for you. He comes out with the Albanian eagle in the back of his vest in the first dance and the whole world, oh my God, he goes, He's Albanian and it opened the doors. And these were all these moments through the years that I've seen them flourish to where we are today, which now you have, like Mina said, all these great artists that are coming through, flying colors, the doors are open. Now everyone has a chance to feel equal.
Yes, I would like to add something. Even in my profession, I have so many followers who are following the opera. And every time, it's about five years, I feel so moved because every time in every message that you want to write something in Albanian. It's not anymore in English or in Italian or in French or in every part of the world that I see now. Always I have some cards and they try to write in Albanian. Thank you. Or different words in Albanian and it makes me feel uh, every time I'm so moved because it's somehow yes exactly now we feel uh, we feel equal and maybe we went forward as well so and we opened the doors we opened the doors and it's going to be better for the young generation because for us it was it was hard I remember in Italy when I went first of all in Italy and it was so hard and uh, as Amina said sometimes without uh, with without feeling ashamed, but sometimes I felt embarrassed to say Albanian because of a lot, a lot of not beautiful examples, or it was a difficult time, that period, 93, 94, but now I feel so proud and uh, to, to, to feel and to see that everyone is, is uh, we open, exactly, as Fadil said, we open, we open the, the doors for the young generation to feel them proud, they are Albanian, so, and uh, yeah. So, Ermanela and Amina, we have a question to you from people who are, who are watching the show. What would you say to the young girls in Albania and Kosovo who cannot see this conversation but look to you for inspiration for their dreams? Most of them cannot even go to college. So all three of you as artists, but this was directed at the, at the, at the ladies, you were told a thousand times you're not good enough, you can't do this for, for a thousand of reasons, but there was something inside that made you keep going. What was that and how did your Albanian how did your Albanian culture impact how you how you made those kinds of decisions? Oh, the Albanian, you know what I can say to the young girls, the young generation is that uh, even if it's difficult, okay, but it's something. It's the, the voice inside of you that we want to make it. We we want to do, the Albanians. We always we fought so hard, historic, okay. So we have that kind, you have, everyone has that kind of that, that fire, that fighter inside, and you have to keep it out, to take it out. Everyone has that. And if you do, never stop dreaming and working, dreaming and working hard, the right moment will come and uh, everything will be possible. It was for me, and I know, I think, even for Amina, so nothing is impossible if you really committed yourself hundred percent even in most difficult difficult situations and uh, uh, most difficult situations so for me I remember I you know I was we're going back to 2000 okay and you know wars just had wrapped up in in, in, in most of the Balkans and women at that time and I my my mom's generation didn't vote they didn't drive they were being called names if there were women drivers um you know I grew up in a village I grew up Muslim I grew up um my grandmother prayed five times a day um you know so it was a very conservative household so I remember asking my mom and my dad if I could you know do modeling and and, and at that time that was forbidden. Those words to come out of my mouth as a young girl that was potentially getting ready to be married off um, was just something that was unprecedented. It was unheard. And so when I did finally go and when I did start my career, um, it was really tough because in the wildest dreams of my life, I could have never envisioned that my parents would have ever allowed me to do some such thing. Um, you know, it's really sad for me to say this because as I step ground and I step feet into Albania and I step feet into um, the most remote areas of Albania today with my organization that I work with, with Bunyav Andrushe, I still see this. You know, um, I still see girls that are not allowed to go to school after sixth grade. I still see girls that get married off in their early teens. And so I always try to encourage them. I always try to connect them to relate with my story. My life was that. I was that girl. My parents almost married me off at 15 years old until I told my dad, please don't do this to me. So for me, I really truly 
share with them that I am you. I grew up in a village just like you. I milking, I milk cows just like you are doing it right now. Don't ever give up in dream because life is not all about what everyone says. Life is about what the sky has offered you and it's the whole entire sky. When you look up, you can just turn 360 and see every star. And really truly to those women, I say never stop fighting because life is too short for you to live the way others expect you to live, no matter what that is. No matter it is the person who you love, they don't want you to be with them. Whether it is that you're dressing a certain way, they don't want you to dress like that. You want to go to school and they're telling you you shouldn't be going to school. You want to become a politician, but they're saying men are only politicians. Absolutely not. We live in the world today that if you put your heart, soul into something, and you really, truly work hard. God knows I've slept in Italy and France with no food in the fridge when I started my modeling career. No food but I still pushed and pushed. And when I turned 18, my dad told me, that's it, you're done. You're never gonna model again. You're gonna go back to school, rightfully so. I was suffering, it wasn't working. But then at age of 19, something inside me just wouldn't let go. Like I had this like weird, it was like, oh, it would just get stuck in my chest. And I and I just said, I gotta go back. And, and I did. And within the first three months, I was on my first Vogue cover. I was walking every runway in the world. And, you know, and, and that's, that's a success story. That really is a dream come true. So no matter who you are, wherever you are, just fight. Don't give up. So for those of you who think that the life of, of, of a beautiful uh, woman is so easy, that's part of the answer is that, you know what, it takes a lot of years to really get to where you are. And at the end, it's that voice inside that keeps it going. Fadid, we're talking about how you want to, discovering your voice and knowing this is what you wanted to do. You didn't start out by being a, a photographer. How did that happen? Actually, I, I always loved art. And I remember my father saying the same thing, be an electrician, get married, have children, don't think of anything else. And I finally had to fight him, you know, as being the youngest of the boys, and to fight him and try to do all the world, both the worlds. And I went to art school for design at FIT in New York. And then as I was going, changing courses every two, three months, I wasn't finding myself what I wanted to do. And then one day I met a photographer at school and she did some pictures of me and whatever. So I started loving being around her all the time for some reason, but I didn't know why. So I became the stylist for her. And one day she said, why don't we uh, go to Italy together and get discovered there? That's where everybody went, all the artists went there. And I really wanted to get away with my family to, so I'm not influenced so much you know, by that side. And at that time, I would go to the Albanians to make fun of me. They go, oh, you're an artist, you know, and put me down, make me feel bad. I go to the Americans, go, oh, you're a genius, and they're paying me. I said, well, what's wrong with this picture? I need to go to somewhere where I'm being kept more positive. Of course, I always loved the Albanians in my heart, but I needed to put them away for a while to make it myself. And I came back to help all of those who talk bad about, you know. So after going to Italy one day and then being there with, uh, with her, she was doing a photo shoot for me and I was styling the shoot and she was not focused. She was only doing it because she owed me a favor, not because her heart was into it. So every time the model turned a certain angle, she clicked too late. And I was behind her going, ooh, ah, ooh, she missed all, you know, the whole time and screaming the other. And as I left, I said, wow, she wasted my whole day. I get one good picture of my book. I said, I wish I had a camera. I'm taking damn pictures of myself. On that moment, I just stopped and said, wait a minute, could I do this? But I'd be a photographer. I love people. I love beauty. I love to make people happy. And I was like, and this, I hate nine to five jobs. And this was the perfect job. And I said, maybe I can do it. And I went back. I said, I never looked in the camera. And I just tried the camera. And she said, yeah, take it. I put my eye on the camera. I directed the model the way I had learned from her. The moment that I directed the model, I said, look, point him down, look at me. And I clicked that one moment. I said, I got the power to make this person look good and to make money for them. And that's when I came back and started photography and then started his history after that. But the great thing about that, and what I went through in that moment, that I found myself was such a liberating moment because now you could not stop me. As you were saying, I have a direction, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna surround myself with people that make me feel good and empower me. And I certainly did. And I try to share with every artist today, the same feeling that I had. I bring interns in here, I have them watch and walk around and see where they can find, where can they find themselves. Whether it's photography, makeup, hair, style and design. And it certainly makes me so happy when I see them, like today, look at the photographers and designers in Kosovo and Albania. 
that everywhere, when I see these kids doing such beautiful work, my heart just grows and grows and it makes me feel so amazing. And just last week was, you know, another, another great story where I had brought designers to Kosovo and Albania, American designers, Sherry Hill, for years to empower and to, to train the Albanians. And the other day, and she's the head of the designer for Miss Universe. So the other day, I got a phone call from Miss, U Miss USA. She goes, I want a Kosovo designer. I want Martin Tahiti. I'm like, what? No, I don't want nobody else. I want this designer. And it was amazing that we got made it happen. She got to wear her uh, dress on her final walk and now being a designer. And for me, my dream is there now, where I see this flourish now in everywhere. Like Marila Nurcha today, designing yes, this. I mean, just today, we did this, I don't know, did a clip earlier, did this shoot, and we have Albanian makeup artists, Albanian stylists, everybody together. It was such a beautiful thing to see, collaboration of arts working together. Of course, I love the whole world, the whole, you know, not just Albanians, but it was just good to see that they are finding their voice and they're moving forward. And I think we did our job. And Manela, how did you break through? You had, you must have had doubt at some point early on. Are you good enough? At what point did you realize that you could really do this thing? What was that moment like? Oh, that moment. Actually, it was uh, when I was a child. I knew that from the beginning. I knew that. And my story, it was a story like in the opera, in the, the, in the movie, because I was really a timid child because, of course, the situation in Albania, but always I had a diary and I wrote, you know, in my free imagination that one day I wanted to become an opera singer. I wanted to, to be, to sing in every part of the world, to be successful and try to enter it. And then somehow, you know, now I'm living exactly what I wrote in the diary. I read the diary and I'm really so surprised and proud that, that I saw that. It was inside of me. It's and called The Secret, the book. Exactly. Yeah, really and like it. it was difficult. It was very, very difficult because you see the dream, you know, and to face the reality. When I went to Italy without money and uh, I didn't eat for seven days and still I had the choice to go back to Albania. But it was this dream, this, this something, the voice inside of me. It was something that, that I felt my soul was free. My soul, I felt myself. I felt this kind, felt that kind of freedom when I was singing. So I, I went, you know, I, I, I followed my, my, my dream and I faced so many, many difficulties. But at the end, I made it. And I knew that from the beginning, to be honest with you. And I didn't make compromises with my passion. Yes, it took so it took a long time. It was so hard, but at the end, you know, the difficulties they shape our souls, what we are now, and uh, and I think we learn from the pain, and that and as artists we can show that we can we can uh, connect through the pain, through the, the success, through the hard work with everyone. So that's the key I found in myself, and which I see that connection with uh, the young singers in Albania and not only but uh, with young artists especially right now we live in this kind of situation that the the, uh, the the future it's not it's not secure anymore but still we have to see that light that sunshine inside of us and if we see that doesn't mean that the other people exactly will and uh, and then somehow I felt my dream in my dream in my difficulties even the universe push towards to make that realize uh, to make me uh, become uh, to, to reach my my dream so i saw that from the beginning and everyone has that but you have to believe and to listen that voice yes it's going to be difficult it's going to be difficult but all the big dreams they, they they take you know the big big sacrifices so i think uh, yeah and maybe i was lucky i saw that it was hard but uh, somehow i i i uh, I dreamt in I was I, I dreamt in that world when I was a child, and I felt I feel that every moment when I'm on stage, every moment when I'm now when I'm on stage, I I feel always I go back to that uh, young Hermonella, that that child, and I, I I'm proud because I don't see I saw it, and every time when I I go and I work with uh, young uh, singers in master classes, always I tell them if really you want something, you have to fight and fight and the, it's, it's very very important and uh, so maybe the most common ends that the common thread that we got out of that is that here are three people 
And it's so easy to admire them. And it's so easy to think, oh, they have it so easy. But each of them shared with you the really difficult time for them to get through. The thousands and thousands of no. But the thing that kept them all going was that there was a fire inside. I think Hermanela called it. There's a fire inside that just, you know what? No one's going to put out that fire. Now, Ermina, you have recently also gotten into philanthropy, in which you have a foundation, you're getting involved in issues. What are the important issues for you that you are, that you really want to focus on and why? Oh, God. Where do I start and where do I end? Um, so my my life and, 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 and this fire that Ermanela is talking about and the connection to your roots and, and through my career, you know, I've got to see the whole practically the whole entire world and 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 I just felt like something was missing for me you know and and I always had this philanthropic aspect in me it was embedded in me from my mom and and this is not just my mom this is every single Albanian mother you know it must have happened to all of us that is here but I'm sure to all of everyone who's watching us because my mother would never let anyone leave her house hungry like if someone walked into my mom's home, she would say, no, you know, so it was, this was in her. And I'll never forget as a kid when the war was in Kosovo and so many refugees would pass through, um, refugees would pass through um, Montenegro and we would put them on boats and then pass them uh, along and try to get them into Albania. And my mom would literally take everything she could from us, socks, clothes, whatever she could get, and just change these poor kids that would come in like soak wet clothes or dirty, and she would feed them. And then they would send them off and, and just hope that they would get into Albania safe and sound. And so from that very little little age of mine, I knew that there was something in, in, in me that I always wanted to help and, and do something for others that couldn't be as good as I was. And so through the years, I was always searching for a nonprofit that I could, you know, join forces and, and, and try to, you know, see what can I do from my aspect, you know, as, as, an, as an artist, but also as, 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 an, as an Albanian, as someone that loves my co community and wants to give back. And so I found Fundia Vandrusha and um, I started speaking to Arbor Haidari, which is the founder. Um, and... On my first trip, um, about three years ago, I had just given birth to my to my oldest daughter at the time, and and I went and and I saw I saw horrific stories, real life stories, something I'd never seen in my life. And so, um, oh my God, I get like my my voice shakes just thinking about it because I'm telling you, but I'm visualizing the pictures of of these these families that. I continue going back now for the last three years, every single year. Um, this has become truly my, my, my mission in life, you know, to take what I have been blessed with, what I've worked so hard for, and also what I had a little bit of luck with to get as much as I can today here in this world that we live in, where we are so fortunate um, and to join forces with other artists and other people and other organizations to teach them about a side of Albania that is still there, that it still exists. You know, I got criticized sometimes on social media and someone questioned, how do you see social media? Social media is a great tool for me because I really truly use it to show what I want to show. You know, I don't show all of everything that I have in my life going on, but there's some parts that are more important than others. And helping the Albanian people and Albanian families, not just in Albania, but in Macedonia and in Kosovo and in uh, Montenegro has become really, truly what I love doing more than anything in this world. I well, love then, going and, 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 and creating something out of nothing, you know? And so Fadid is also someone that from the beginning, you know, um, he said to me, he goes, Amina, get ready. Get ready because it's going to be hard what you're going to see. I remember after my first trip, I was crying the whole entire time. I couldn't stop crying. He goes, you got to get strong because you're going to see something that a lot of Albanians don't want to talk about. And just really shortly, I want to go back to what I was saying. I was being criticized by Albanians how embarrassing it is that I was showing on social media 
how poor families are living in Albania. And that to me was so embarrassing that people were criticizing me for shedding a light on those people that no one sheds light on, that no one really truly at this time cares and forgets about them and leaves them to rot in these areas that there's no electricity, there's no water, there's no schools, there's no hospitals, there's no life infrastructure. And so that drove me even further. I was like, you know what? If you think that you're gonna put shame on me for exposing the side of Albania, now you've set up a whole new lioness in me. And so I just keep going back and, 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 and I would be happy to bring whoever that's watching us on board with me. And I would be happy to take you with me on mission trips and show you really truly a side of Albania that a lot of people don't necessarily want to talk about. So Fadid, you are known for taking pictures of some of the most beautiful people, some of the most famous people, but I think the most powerful pictures you took were the ones in the refugee camps. Can you talk to us about that? Again, going back to the first visual, again, I had that agenda that, you know, we must show people that we're the same, they can relate to us. So for me, it was shooting the children in front of their tents. It was really important to see how clean the Albanians were. Even with the tent, the tent was so clean and children were always dressed up and cleaned and washed in front of their tents. And I never forget that one picture that I was shooting children's faces and bringing them back to the U.S. And at that time we had film, not digital. So I remember shooting these pictures and not knowing what I really shot. And then we would have exhibits. And one picture that I shot of a, of a, of a young boy in front of me was painting with crayons. And as he was painting, when I went to develop the film, and as I developed the film, I see his hand, what he was painting, it was the American flag. And it was such a beautiful moment that, you know, to see how it was an accidental, but it was not accidental, that, he, that we were the hope at that time. And so I, I think from that day on, it was, again, it was always important to just keep showing the faces, keep showing the faces, keep showing the modern so that they can relate to us. They can give us a chance and to prove ourselves. And I really think we've achieved that. And one of my biggest inspirations at that time was you, Avni. I have to say that. Because you were the speaker, I don't want to put you in the spot, but you were the speaker of all the Albanians at the time. And I could never speak as I'm doing better today than I usually do. But I hate speaking in front of cameras or people. But I remember that uh, watching you speak in such confidence and, and, and for in behalf of all the Albanians in the world inspired me to come to because I never like politics. I never want to be involved in that stuff. But I, I enjoyed watching you. With, you looked great and you spoke great. And you look like what they wanted to see, basically. And I remember one time, I was, was me as an artist, we were answering the phones, people calling for to help us. And what do I do? I get that stupid phone call from a Serb complaining about us. And I thought he was going to give us money. I said, you know what? He goes, who do I call to complain about? I said, call Milosevic. I hung the phone. And you pick up the phone and talk to the guy and convince him that, you know. And I said to you, how come you never get, you know, never get aggravated? He goes, because I know we're right. So I never get nervous. And so you were always my inspiration and really, and, all, and no one gave you the credit they deserve because to me, you were the guy that made all those connections. I also am compelled to tell everybody that our mothers are great friends. Our no, fathers no, no. know each other. And so what I would no, tell you- you really, you really- Take all of that stuff into consideration when you listen I, and remember- I never recognize you. Really 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 and, and I thank you for everything you have done. You were that face. Yeah, we're down to about five minutes. Thank you. I'm trying to evade the conversation. <laughs> so we're down to about five minutes. We have reflected upon your career. We've talked about messages that you're giving to other people. But in terms of Albanians on a broader sense in the future, you know, there's Albania, Kosovo. We have we can affect the votes in Montenegro and in Macedonia. So suddenly now we've got Albanians everywhere. How do we figure out a way of uniting ourselves so we can really make this next century um, just, just better for all Albanians who really, up until now, have had to deal with some extreme challenges. Should I, do you want me to, okay, I'll take this one. So um, as an Albanian from Montenegro, I love that we have an Albanian from Montenegro, one from Tropoi, one from Albania. It's like, we are literally the, the, the mixed here. Um, so I, I really truly feel that we have, we live in an era where it's really scary what social media can offer to us, but at the same time, it's such an incredible tool. And I've really noticed in the last three years since I've been or I'm joining Fundia Vandrusha and 
the power that social media has for our communities and how incredible it is that we see all of us come together when we need each other. I will never forget and I will I I have every single person that has ever given me one donation dime in my notebook that I've written. And people really truly come together the most when we notice that we need each other the most. I'll never forget during Termet, there were people that were giving $1, $2, $5. And I said, thank you from the bottom of my heart to every and every single one of you because everyone has their own families, their own families to feed. They have their challenges. You know, they don't, you don't know what tomorrow brings. And so through social media, I feel like we've had the opportunity to really gather all of our nations together, all of the Albanian people of all the Balkans. And I think it's something that we need to do. I'm going to say it. We have to do a little bit better to stay a little bit more connected. So I have to correct myself and give you a long question for no reason. We're down to two minutes. And Manela, take one minute. And what's your closing comment today? The Albanian, we are one from Kosovo, from uh, Macedonia or Albania. So we have to be the, the message that I would like to say is we have to be all together to love each other, to respect each other, to appreciate each other. And only working together, connecting together, we can make the difference to become a better country in every sense. Fadil? I think just loving one another because I, I mean, if, to me, the, the one thing that I, I was always upset about is that I would find, try to help someone and they would try to put him down. That I never understood. I'm like, please, just if you can help them, don't hurt them. Just if you can give me a helping hand, just do it. Because, you know, uh, look at the Jews, how amazing they've got, what they've gone through and where they are today, you know, by helping one another. And I think we have to learn that lesson. And I think it's just loving and respect. And just and don't put each other down. You know, if you can help them, don't hurt them. Just let them let them live, <laughs> do their thing. But I think it's it to me. It, the social media is amazing what's happening because now I tell all the artists, listen, you can do it. If you have a talent, you can put it out there. You don't need an agent, somebody to, that doesn't like you to not help you. Put it out there, and the right people come along. Email photographers. I tell them do this with iPhone. You'll find your eye with that. So I think it's been an amazing thing. You know. So let me take an opportunity to thank all three of you. You are world-class people, and your heart is world-class. And thank you so much. You serve as such an inspiration for so many Albanians. To those of you who spent some time with us, you can see that the glamorous and the powerful, it took a long time to get there. There was a lot of doubt, but there was that fire inside it that kept each of them chasing their dreams, even as we heard from Fadil, in which he started in one area and wound up doing something completely different. Everybody's journey is completely different, but you really have to believe in yourself. And for those of you who are then dealing with your Albanian identity, I think for me, just to share with you all, is I always heard my father's voice in the background when it came time to doing the right thing or the wrong thing. So somehow, even the difficult decisions wound up being easier. There is this Albanian culture, and I think for those of us who got out earlier, it was the kanun or, or nothing else. And so to the viewers, I hope you got something out of this. Thank you so very much for tuning in with us and enjoy the rest of the sessions on Gurmin as Gurmin tries to bring together the diaspora and the Falcons. Thank you very much. We love Gurmin. This is a great, great group. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.